SNL just won't be the same without her. Hi, I'm Emily and welcome to Ms. Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Leslie Jones SNL moments. It's an interesting idea, Leslie, but trust me, it'll never fly. <laughs> for this list, we're including anything that aired as part of a live SNL broadcast. Unfortunately, though, we won't be including any promos. Let's get to it. Leslie's PSR lowered by two full points for breaking the show's no drug policy and her several attempts to eat her partner. Number 10, UES. Some think it's bougie, well, the haters. Your train's got stairs, we got escalators. SNL has been parodying rap videos for years. From classics like Lazy Sunday to lesser known gems like Natalie's rap and its sequel, the sketch show has produced a ton of hilarious music video spoofs throughout its history. Put a dude, don't wanna switch blades, switch blades, switch blades. Woo, woo. In this clip, Leslie Jones puts her own unique spin on the tried and true practice, flipping the script by declaring allegiance to the hardest hood of all, New York City's Upper East Side. Man, everybody's balling on the Upper East Side. People from all over the world come to live the UES life. Jones parodies many of the UES stereotypes, from its affluent residents and upscale boutiques, to subway trains that have that nobody peed in here smell. Always get a seat and it's clean as hell, got that nobody peed in here subway smell. With host James McAvoy playing a rapping German baker, we think UES should be considered amongst SNL's best rap spoofs. My father baked bread and my father's father. You get bread somewhere else, Psh, don't even pass her. Number nine, weekend update, slave draft. Hello everybody, uh, I wanted to come out here tonight and congratulate Lapita on winning people's most beautiful person, and I agree that she is very beautiful. But for me, personally, I'm waiting for them to put out the most useful list, you know what I'm saying? Because that's where I'm going to shine. Leslie Jones' first Saturday Night Live appearance was not without controversy. The longtime comedian was hired as a writer in January of 2014, but found herself sitting behind the weekend update desk with Colin Jost in May of that same year. If you was in the parking lot, <laughs> and three Crips is about to whoop your ass. <laughs> Who you gonna pick then? I would pick you. You're damn right you would. The two discussed the fact that actress Lupita Nyong'o had recently been named People Magazine's Most Beautiful, with Jones playing an image expert who was upset that there isn't an award for most useful person. Look at me, see, see, I'm single right now, but back in the slave days, I would have never been single. Soon Jones was ranting about how she would have never been single during the slave days and that if there was a slave draft, she'd be the number one overall pick. The skit immediately caught flack, but Jones defended the joke, calling it brilliant. Now, I can't even get a brother to take me out for a cheap dinner. I mean, damn, can a bitch get a beef bowl? <laughs> number eight, weekend update, being hacked. Great to have you, Leslie. Now, what do you think of all these email hacks? Well, Colin, um, I was recently hacked myself. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, you know, all they did was re release some new pics of me, which is nothing because I don't know if y'all know this about me, but I ain't shy. In 2016, Leslie Jones became the target of racial and misogynistic attacks on Twitter, primarily due to her involvement with that year's Ghostbusters remake. Additionally, her personal website was hacked and private photos of her were made public. You can't embarrass me more than I have embarrassed myself. I know all the details, cause I was there. Jones responded to these heinous acts head on with an epic appearance on Weekend Update, in which she said that she's very comfortable with who she is, wryly stating that, If you wanna see Leslie Jones naked, just ask! Clearly on a roll, Jones went on to quip that if she had the same level of computer skills as the people who hacked her, she'd use them for something useful, like renewing her driver's license online or building the perfect robot man. Hashtag Leslie World. Forget about Westworld, I'm talking about Leslie World. <laughs> Number seven, House Hunters. It was five cents over budget. Should we cross that one off the list? In this sketch from season 44, Jones and host Liev Schreiber play a married couple searching for their dream home in a spoof of the well-known HGTV reality show House Hunters. Are you gonna be okay with the toilets on the ceiling? Sure, I'll just reach up and grab the tank, jackknife my legs up and around the bowl and cross my ankles firmly around the base. Once I'm up there, I'll just poop normally. If you ever doubted Jones' ability to play it straight during a sketch, then this clip will surely make you see the light. In it, she and Schreiber sort through houses that have some seriously bonkers defects, like being filled with Australian vampires 
having a gas stove on the bed, and bathtubs overflowing with magicians. What about your man cave? There's no room. I can't have the cave, I'll just keep the man in the basement. Oh, and if you like the sketch, be sure to check out our list on the top 10 SNL season 44 sketches. But we feel like this is a new chapter for us. Even if I didn't get my man cave. Uh, can you let me out? <laughs> Number six, etiquette lesson. Now then, Ms. Thomas, have you ever attended high tea? One of the best parts about being a repertory player on SNL is that you get to appear in sketches alongside some of the entertainment industry's most exciting and talented individuals. Case in point, this hilarious sketch featuring Leslie Jones and two-time Academy Award winner Emma Thompson. Now repeat after me. Back and forth. Back and forth. <laughs> six to twelve. Here, Jones plays Meghan Markle's third cousin, in England to attend the christening of Markle and Prince Harry's son. I said, back and forth. Thompson plays Mrs. Vivian Hargrave, a no-nonsense etiquette coach hell-bent on making sure Jones's character learns how to behave at high tea. I don't want to sing. Six, one to two. What? What to two? Don't even think about using a knife. Be honest, when this sketch began, did you really think it would end with Emma Thompson slamming Leslie Jones's face into a bowl of clotted cream? Yeah, we didn't think so. Clotted cream? This look real nasty. No, perhaps you should try it. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, Weezer. Wait, you haven't heard this yet? This is Weezer's cover of Africa. It's good, right? The best sketches are the ones you don't see coming. Take this seemingly innocuous bit involving Jones and host Matt Damon. The two are attending a dinner party when the conversation turns to Weezer. I'm just a little confused because real Weezer fans know that they haven't had a good album since Pinkerton in 96. Oh, wow. uh-oh, looks like we have a purist in the house. All right, all right, all right, I'm gonna have fun with this. We soon discover that Jones and Damon's characters are die-hard fans of the alt-rock band, albeit in very different ways. Damon believes that the band's entire catalog is God's gift to music, whereas Jones thinks the band fell off following the release of their 1996 album, Pinkerton. Pork and Beans is better than Buddy Holly. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, you're dumb. Oh, you're dumb. Martha, tell him he's dumb. What follows is a twisted debate over the band's legacy, complete with threats of violence and awkward silences. So yeah, hilarious. Also, can we take a second to appreciate Jones's haircut in this one? You just don't understand what Rivers is going through right now. <laughs> Bitch! Rivers don't understand what Rivers is going through. I understand Rivers better than he understand himself. Number four, Leslie wants to play Trump. For a long time, you know, I never thought that it could be a possibility. Few SNL regulars from the 2010s have had the ability to take viewers on an emotional roller coaster in just a few minutes, quite like Leslie Jones. Do you really think he's gonna do this the next four years? Doesn't he have other stuff to do? I'm not sure, but I mean, who's gonna replace him? In Leslie Wants to Play Trump, the indomitable comedian makes it her mission to take over for Alec Baldwin when the actor decides to hang up his Donald Trump impression. Is it like a Hamilton thing where you're making a comment on race and politics? Nope, it's about giving America what it wants. Despite the pleas of her co-workers, including her fictional boyfriend, SNL writer-actor Kyle Mooney, Jones moves forward with her plan. She even gets the costume department to outfit her with a blonde wig and Trumpian suit. Lorny, baby! I have a huge idea! Big Lee! However, the crowning achievement of this sketch comes when Lauren Michaels rejects Jones's idea, causing her to destroy his office in a fit of rage. Seriously, how do they come up with this stuff? <laughs> Number three, Naked and Afraid, Celebrity Edition. When my agent asked me if I wanted to appear on the show naked, I was like, yeah. Based on the popular Discovery Channel series Naked and Afraid, in which two contestants must survive in the wilderness with literally nothing other than their wits, this SNL sketch paired Leslie Jones with Game of Thrones star Peter Dinklage. Let me just start off by saying, <laughs> you are hacking. <laughs> 
It soon becomes clear that these polar opposites are no match for the wild, let alone each other. Jones shows up already in the buff, having brought with her a bottle of Frank's red hot sauce as her one survival item. Things only manage to get worse for the embattled duo, with Jones referring to Dinklage as Tyrion and cuddling him to the point of suffocation. She knows my name isn't Tyrion. I've told her several times. Kudos to whoever came up with this one. I love you, Tyrion. Peter. Number two, Love and Leslie. I've tried internet dating and, you know, getting hooked up by my friends and yeah, nobody never really wants to actually date me. We mentioned earlier that Leslie Jones was in a fictional relationship with her Saturday Night Live co-star Kyle Mooney for years. Well, this is where it all began. Love and Leslie is about Jones's search for the right man, a journey that over the years had many ups and downs. It feels like the only men that I interact with is the ones that I work with, you know? Sometimes it's not a bad thing. I just don't want to be on camera, okay? Well, you're not ashamed to be with me, are you? Of course not, Leslie. Well, until she met Mooney, that is. It's pretty clear why this sketch works. Jones and Mooney have wildly different personalities and physically are polar opposites, with their union reminding more than a few people of Kip and LaFonda's from Napoleon Dynamite. The commitment to this sketch runs deep, with everyone from Beck Bennett to Lorne Michaels appearing in the mockumentary, and Mooney pretending to be upset over Jones constantly objectifying Colin Jost. Why does everyone think that's real? She's just doing a character! It's, it's like entertainment, okay? Oh, and Dave Chappelle's in it. Enough said. God damn! Did y'all f*** my dresser room? <laughs> I would watch an entire show of Peter Dinklage and Leslie Jones. It doesn't have to be naked in the forest or anything. But some of my favorite Leslie Jones moments have to be her weekend updates. Actually, some of these honorable mentions are some of those, so check them out. Does this bitch look like she ain't never sucked the d <laughs> What's up? Annie in the house? I was taking my pills and my vitamins. You know, I gotta stay strong, you know what I'm saying? But I am so glad I watched the movie. It taught me something I never knew. Black women help astronauts go to space. Why didn't they teach me that in school? And did you like the bobsledding? <laughs> Ooh, yes, Lord, I sure love the bobsledders. That's a man. Whatever, my arms rule. I love vegetables and I can be president whenever I want. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, weekend update, Alabama abortion ban. Here to comment is our own Leslie Jones. <laughs> In 2019, Alabama passed the Human Life Protection Act, more commonly referred to as the Alabama Abortion Ban, which made performing an abortion a criminal offense with punishments for doctors ranging from 10 years in prison to life. I'm out living my life, then I see on the news a bunch of states are trying to ban abortion and then tell me what I can and can't do with my body. Next thing you know, I'm in Starbucks and they won't take my credit card because I'm a woman instead of the regular reason, which is I don't have no money on it. Moving right Right along. Shortly thereafter, Leslie Jones appeared on Weekend Update and boy did she not disappoint. Dressed up in a Handmaid's Tale costume, Jones proceeded to verbally decimate the ban, as well as the men who signed it into law. If any of them had lips, I would tell them to kiss my entire ass. <laughs> you can't control women. She does a fantastic job of adding levity to a disturbing situation. However, Jones ultimately transcends the comedic nature of SNL to deliver a powerful message about the ramifications of the Human Life Protection Act, making the viewer acutely aware of just how horrifying it truly is. The fact that nine states are doing this means this really is a war on women. And if you're a woman out there and you feel scared or confused, just know that you're not alone. There's so many women out there that got your back, especially me. Leslie Dracaris, that bitch Jones. Leslie Jones is a quality follow on Twitter, just telling you. Actually, not to toot my own horn or anything, but I also have Twitter. Give me a holler at Emily A. Brayton. But before you do that, hit that subscribe button and check out this other great video. Bye!